yields back. Chair recognizes Mr. Barron. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Ranking Member. Um, you know, the, the events of October 7th are tragic. Um, you know, having spent some time in Israel, you know, twice in the past few months prior to October 7th, having been to Surat, having previously been to having lunch with some of the, the kibbutzes that, that were attacked, you know, many of those individuals that I met, many of the young people were the, the most pro finding a, a two-state solution. And, you know, what's tragic about October 7th is I, that may be an impossible dream for the foreseeable future. Um, you know, we stand with Israel. We stand with Israel's right to defend itself. We stand that um, Israel is a Jewish homeland. Um, but, you know, I was reading an article in the New York Times this morning um, where they were quoting Hamas's leadership on what their intent was. And their intent and their fear was that the Palestinian cause was slipping away. It wasn't central to, to dialogue. Um, they were watching our facilitated negotiations with Saudi Arabia and Israel. They were watching the Abraham Accords. And their goal was to, you know, there's not a tactical strategic benefit to beheading a baby or killing a child in front of their parents or killing a parent in front of a child. That's to provoke terror. That's to provoke a reaction. And just quoting um, Hamas's leadership, they wanted this reaction. They wanted and anticipated um, that Prime Minister Netanyahu, that the Israeli government, the IDF, would have to respond to, to this terror and a, and a heinous attack. Um, and Hamas, you know, from my calculation, understood that there would be a, a major civilian toll, and they would want to use that, the loss of innocent Palestinian civilian life um, to start to bring the Arab world back into a focus on um, the Palestinian cause, that they will continue to do this because it is their strategy to continue to provoke terror, to t try to foment unrest in the, the, the streets. Um, and you know, I do worry that Prime Minister Netanyahu's response um, is do exactly what, the Pal what Hamas wants them to do, which is now also isolating Israel, and the world is creating anti-Semitic attacks on our college campuses around the world. Um, and again, this is not talking about a ceasefire. This is a war between Israel and Hamas. We support Israel's right and um, actually will work with them to um, decapitate Hamas, erode Hamas's ability to ever perpetrate an attack like this again. But it is, and maybe this is a question for um, Secretary Stroud, there are other legitimate ways to prosecute this war against Hamas um, and perhaps minimize um, innocent Palestinian casualties. Um, and I would imagine that we're in conversation with the IDF, with the Israeli government, to think about what those are, special operators, et cetera, while protecting the Israeli homeland. Absolutely, we are. Consistently, Israel is a democracy, democracy with whom we share values. They have an obligation both to take action to defend their people and their, and their country and ensure that Hamas can never again perpetrate a terrorist act like it did on October 7th. And they also have an obligation to distinguish between terrorists and militants and civilians who deserve access to humanitarian aid and protections consistent with the law, with international humanitarian law and the law of armed conflict. The Israelis are absolutely aware and cognizant of it, and we have conversations with them every day. And perhaps for Secretary Leaf, um, you know, none other than Naftali Bennett and others in open sources have suggested a different strategy. And, you know, a, a strategy that says Israel is going to occupy Gaza, I think our own Secretary of State has said an occupation of Gaza is not, not possible and I think would be a bad strategy. Is that? Yeah, Congressman, in fact, I'd, I'd love to quote a few things that uh, from Secretary Blinken said today in Tokyo at the G7 ministerial because it gets to a number of points that you've made. He said the only way to ensure that this crisis never happens again is to begin setting the conditions for durable peace and security and to frame our diplomat uh, diplomatic efforts now with that in mind. The United States believes key elements should include no forcible displacement of Palestinians from Gaza, not now, not after the war. 
No use of Gaza as a platform for terrorism or other violent attacks. No reoccupation of Gaza after the conflict ends. No attempt to blockade or besiege Gaza. No reduction in the territory of Gaza. And I would add to that a few affirmative principles that I know the Secretary uh, feels very strongly about um, and that inform our, our, our approach now and they will certainly inform our approach after, which is that, as I said earlier, Palestinian people have to be at the center of post-conflict <laughs> governance. The West Bank and Gaza must ultimately be treated as a, as a common uh, polity, if you will. We have to look to rebuild a road that's long been missing towards negotiations for the Palestinians because what we've seen, uh, and you touched on it in your opening remarks, is a real weaponization of an unresolved issue, uh, an unresolved legitimate aspiration for statehood. It's been weaponized by Hamas, and Hamas has an ultimately uh, dark and nihilistic sort of uh, a savage kind of vision uh, for uh, for that cause, and it is not one that, frankly, most Palestinians uh, align with. But um, but Hamas and other members of Iran's so-called axis of resistance are are very much are are very much uh, desirous of weaponizing that that issue, and so we must take it away from them. Frankly, gentlemen's time has expired. Ch uh, chair recognizes Mr. Wilson. Thank you.